On the fig tree. So I'm gonna pick this one. in a little bag. I think I'll wash them. Just like with other fruit, I wash them in um, water with baking soda. Here's another one. They don't look really, really ripe, but if you leave them much longer than that, then um, the birds get to them. Actually, we've got quite a few on here. Oh, I see one with a wasp. Quite a few. Oh yes. Okay, let me show you this one. This is what happens to the pigs. They just get decimated um, by birds, or they they over ripen and they do this, and then they get little bugs on them. You can wash those. Some of them have been pecked by birds. You can wash those and still eat them. Okay, I'm gonna go hunting. what you often see on figs. And I think, honestly, the heavy, heavy rain we had this week for two or three days did quite a number on the fig tree. I do love to stand underneath and look up. There's another wasp up there. You have to be careful not to grab a fig too early. Some of these branches I can pull down. Jam. It's good to have a combination of fruit that's very ripe and fruit that's slightly underripe. Um, especially with something like figs where you don't use pectin. They have their own pectin, but generally speaking, you um, in order to get a good amount of pectin, you have to have a combination of very ripe and less ripe. There's not really a lot of fruit on this side of the tree. There's a little bitty one, bless its little heart. These are brown turkey figs, and um, they don't always turn a deep pink or purple. Uh, they do turn darker. But the thing you want to look for is this cracking on the skin. That indicates a real softness and that they're ripe enough to cook with. Okay, and now I'm going to put these figs in just a bowl of water, especially one like this that's been a bit opened, um, not pecked at, but just very, uh, it's one of those overripe ones. Especially in the rain, once they get overripe, they um they really do start to open on the bottom. They get heavy. And you can also tell when they're starting to get ripe by how they hang on their branch. If they start to droop, that's a good indication they're starting to get ripe. Now this is not a lot of figs today. I go out about every other day to pick figs. Give the next batch a chance to ripen up. I'm gonna let these soak in here. Move the little soda water around a bit. And then I can put these straight into a freezer bag that I'm keeping in my deep freeze. It's a gallon Ziploc bag and I just keep it in there and every time I get a new bunch of figs, I stick them in there and then before you know it, you have a couple of gallons of figs. Now I'm gonna rinse this water as well. Soda is very salty. You wouldn't wanna leave a whole bunch of soda on your figs. So here's my Ziploc bag full of frozen figs and I've added to it a little bit at a time. Now as you put them in there, if you want to break off the little stem, that can be a good idea, although you can also take those off later. 
but it might be able might be easier to do it now uh, before they're frozen into a solid mass. The nice getting to be really surprised. There's, I didn't think I was going to get very many figs. This one is probably three quarters full as a gallon Ziploc, and um, boy, there's a lot more figs on that tree. And when I just opened up my freezer, I found this bag. These are figs from last year, I suppose. This is off of another fig bush. Uh, these are mission figs, and they're beautiful and dark and big. But you know what? They have more flavor. <laughs> so uh, Adam recently really almost cut that whole bush back. And we'll just be using our brown turkey figs for now, because they do have the best flavor. Hello, YouTube friends. Well, I think today is the day to make fig preserves. Um, it's a little late in the day to be cooking, so if I look a little confused and I use the wrong words, please bear with me. But I want to show you what I'm starting with. Let's crank the camera down here. I've got a pot of boiling water. I'm going to sterilize my jars and my lids. This big pot over here will be for making the preserves in. I've also got a great big bag of lemons. All my figs are in the freezer. And I've got some sugar and probably just a little bit of salt, okay? And I'll post the recipe in the description for you. This is a recipe I've been using for years since we lived in Mississippi and had huge fig trees and I made fig preserves there and I made them here quite a number of times. The nice thing about making fig preserves is you don't need pectin, which is wonderful. So um, it's really it's just figs and sugar and lemons if you like it. Okay, and lemons make all the difference. They do kind of a magical thing to fig preserves that I'm hoping we get to see today. So I'm going to sterilize my jars and then I'll get the figs and we'll get started. Okay, I'm rolling around my last um, ball jar, mason jar, atlas jar, whatever brand you like. Those are the three primary canning jar um, companies, I believe. Getting it sterilized. I have over here five pint-size mason jars, about 16 ounces, and two of these Bon Maman, um, it's a French company. Those are 13 ounces each. I'm hoping this is enough jars. I'm not really sure. I do have other jars I can use, but um, I don't have any more canning jars in really good condition. I do keep a lot of canning jars around. Some of them have chipped edges, so I just use them for things I'm going to put in the refrigerator for a while. I have lots of quart size jars, but that's kind of big for preserves. Um, so I'm going to try to stick with this, and uh, you can even put it in uh, after it cools a little bit in a Tupperware container of some type and put it in your refrigerator. Um, and because there's so much sugar in it, it'll last. So no big deal. Uh, now I'm going to go weigh my figs. My restraining factor here is my sugar. I probably have three cups of sugar. I need three quarters of a cup of sugar for every pound of figs. So I'm going to weigh my figs and kind of look at how many, I have a lot of figs and see how much um, really the sugar will dictate that and also how much jar space I've got. Okay, so I have a big old gallon bag. These are all frozen. It's going to take me a while to fall them out. And another gallon bag. And then there's a partial bag. I think these are from this year. The other thing I haven't forgot about is I have a little quart size bag of rhubarb. Now we don't grow rhubarb here. Oh, I desperately wish we did. This came from my mother's garden. She has a beautiful rhubarb plant. And I looked online to see if people generally combine rhubarb with fig for preserves, and people do. Um, so I'm thinking of throwing some rhubarb in. We'll have to see how that goes. Let me go get my bands out of the water, and then I'll be back with you. This scale has pounds. So we will see how many pounds we got. That's almost four pounds. You know, if I added lemon and a little bit of rhubarb to that, I would get it to four pounds, and that would be just 
just about exactly how much sugar I need. Let's see what the rest of these are. That was three and a half pounds. That one's a little over. I won't be able to make all of my fig preserves today, but I'm gonna get started with the sugar that I've got. Okay, sometimes this happens when you cook, it's okay. Now these figs are coming out of the um, freezer bag very easily and breaking apart to make sure that they're clean and that all the stems are off. I was pretty careful to try to remove stems as I picked them. But you know, when you pick five or ten each day, sometimes you get lazy. The other thing I'm going to want to do I don't want to cut these now because they're so hard, but I'm going to want to get them cut. Because I don't like big chunky fig. Now see, here's one with a stem. I'll take that off. Well, let's go ahead and get these into the pot and get them started. And, um, and I'll work on some more. All right, now they're all in there, and I'm just going to put the lid on and keep this on a low heat. I just want to start to warm them so they'll start to thaw, um, but I don't want them really to do any cooking or burning, so I'm going to keep that pretty low. But um, figs tend to fall apart when you cook them. Um, almost without any effort on your on your part, they will turn um, not to mush, but but fairly spreadable with big chunks. Now I don't like chunks of fig. So I will be um, mushing these with a, here, this potato masher. This is one of the most useful tools you can have. I'm going to use this to make sure that every individual fig is squashed. <laughs> but um, I think I, but I know that rhubarb is very fibrous, which is what I've got going on over here. And so I am going to cut, I'm going to cut this rhubarb up. Now we're going to wait on the lemons over here. Uh, they get added right at the end. I am going to go ahead and put in three cups of sugar for four pounds of fruit. This is three quarters of a cup of sugar for each pound. It's important to remember when you cook that sugar is considered a liquid ingredient. I didn't know this until my husband told me. I know that's a massive amount of sugar, but just remember, you're making a jam. You're making a preserve, which is designed to be eaten by the teaspoonfuls over uh, long periods of time. See, and I've got, I've got a little bit of sugar left, but I don't want to run this out of sugar altogether. That would be an unhappy thing. Okay, so I've got, this my nice spoon. I love this spoon for cooking jam and stuff. Big and sturdy, nice and long. And get down to the bottom of the pot. I want to get some of that sugar down in the bottom again so that it will turn into a liquid. All right, now we're going to cover this. If you cover it, it will keep the heat in better. And we'll come back to this when things have started to melt and see what's happening. Now these figs um, thawed out nicely, and I really like using this masher method. Not only is it faster than chopping each fig into like four pieces by hand, it's also very satisfying to squash them in the bottom of the pan. Um, but this still has a lot of cooking to go because it really, really needs to cook down. It's quite, as you can tell, it's very liquidy. Um, and that's what I meant by the sugar. Plus there's so much juice in these figs as well. Some of them are still whole, they'll cook down. Now I've also got a lot of lemons over here. I'm gonna add them when it's a bit hotter. 
the rhubarb is giving this beautiful pop of deep pink color. But when I add the lemon, it should also cause the fig mixture to become a beautiful pale pink. We'll see if that happens. Okay, now my um, fig mixture here is coming to a boil, a gentle boil, not a hard boil. Um, and after I stir it, it'll return to it eventually. It's not really quite hot enough. You really want it to boil. Want it to boil, add the lemons, and then have it return to a boil. And I really need to cook the lemon rind in the hot preserves so that uh, it's, it's tender to eat on bread. So I'm going to let this get a little bit hotter. There's a lot of different methods. I have a an old method that said I should have rinsed, you know, washed and rinsed my figs, mixed them with the sugar, and soaked them in the refrigerator, or put them in the refrigerator overnight in the sugar um, before I cook them the next day. And then there's a fast method where you um, also, oh, you make a syrup with water and sugar. I really don't want to add any water to this because I think that really dilutes the taste. But this is the way I made it at my mother's house because I had forgotten and I think I didn't even take my recipe book with me. And I just put the sugar and the figs and she likes lots of lemon. She just about likes as much lemon as she does fig, which is kind of crazy. But she loves this. She mounds this preserve on her toast for breakfast, which I think is lovely. And um, when you are my mother's age, you can eat whatever you like. Now notice that the rhubarb is adding a little pop of pink, but that is really kind of a brown preserve. Now, this has gotten this hot at a medium high heat. I did take all the seeds out of these lemons and I chopped mine in half for quarters because I don't like whole slices of lemon. There's a little bit more. And then we're going to bring this back to a very hot, you guys who make preserves, you know, or jam, you know how hot this stuff gets. It is blistering hot. But that has turned into a lovely pink sauce. Isn't that pretty? And now it's really bubbling heartily. I want it to stay at a really roaring boil. Um, and go back to it as soon as I stop stirring. It's close. I did put another lemon, so I put five lemons in there. More than one lemon per pound of fruit. It does seem a little runny to me, but I think I often feel that way about the preserves at this stage. They just don't look like they're gonna thicken, and I think that they thicken later. There's really not any whole figs left in there, I think. I did see a stem floating by a minute ago, and so I pulled that with my spoon and cut it off with a knife and stuck the fig back in there. You also should be careful to get all of the seeds out of your lemon slices, and I cut those, I cut those lemon slices as thin as possible. Not as thick as possible. Um, okay. We're gonna let this keep on going for probably, I don't know, at least 15 more minutes. I really want it cooked. Okay, let's do a little close-up of the canning procedure here. The, the figs are now very mushy. They just look really cooked. I don't know how to describe that. I guess they've been cooking there at least 20 minutes. Got a nice bubble and I give them a good stir every once in a while. Okay, I love this implement. I know you've seen me use it before. It's so important for getting a nice, clean delivery of whatever you're putting in your canning jar. I'm going to try to notice that I get plenty of lemon in each one. Then it's very important to wipe off the rim of your jar. I use a hot 
I'll dip this into the water that's keeping my lids hot. And then just make sure it's dry as well. You don't want any water on there. I'm going to get one of my lids that has been sitting in simmering water all this time. Again, make sure it doesn't have any water on the bottom. Put it on there. And really crank you twist it nicely. Then you grab it. That's gonna be very hot. And you really crank it down as hard as you can and you put it upside down immediately. Okay? And then I'm gonna leave it like that for about 20 minutes. Um, so that it will seal. Yes, now I've got that much left. I'm going to put that into a little round pin, cover it with saran wrap, put it in the refrigerator, and um, just eat that first for breakfast. All right, so these are ready to go in the fridge. These will sit here until about 4.30 today, about 20 more minutes. Then I'll flip them over, and I should hear that nice pop, pop, pop when they seal up. Thanks for joining me.